at number 10, The Dead Book Box. Now, do you remember that the 2012 movie The Possession was based on a true story? Well, that story was based on a De Book box. Now that specific box that the movie was based on is one that now Zach Bagans has at his haunted museum. And this box is actually a wine cabinet that is allegedly haunted by a De Book. And now a De Book is Yiddish for a malicious possessing spirit that people believe to be a dislocated soul of a dead person. And so it becomes trapped in an object, like this wine box, until a person helps release the spirit. Now in Baggins box, it's believed the restless spirit can possess the living, and that's why Zach Baggins is keeping the cabinet closed, because he's a little bit scared of it himself, I would think. Now, the box was originally posted on eBay for sale by a man named Kevin Manis, who was having a ton of trouble with it. Anytime he gave it as a gift to someone, they experienced strange issues and its darkness, and it passed through the hands of others afterwards as they would each have their own unnerving experiences with the box. At Zach Baggins Museum, if you want to see the box, you must insist to see it and be 18 years of age or older and sign a liability waiver because they're not joking around. <laughs> now, not all exhibits at the museum stay open all the time. In our number nine spot, we have the coffin shaped chests. There is a legend in New Orleans called the legend of the casket girls and when French women were sent to the city for marriage arrangements, it is said that these girls carried coffin shaped chests with their belongings. The chests were kept in the attic of a convent, but their belongings went missing. The nuns thought there was some demonic presence taking the belongings of these girls and so they had the chests nailed shut and then they locked the attic and it was later blessed by the Pope. Apparently in 1978, two reporters decided to put this legend to the test and they broke into the attic. Apparently they were found dead the next morning, their heads on the ground and they were drained of all of their blood. Wow. Yep, those chests were definitely cursed. But on to number 8, Jack's Van. Now another thing Baggins has is Dr. Jack Kevorkian's assisted suicide van. Nicknamed Dr. Death, Kevorkian helped over 100 people with terminal illnesses and their lives during the 90s. He did his time for prison for 8 years under charges of second degree murder and died in 2011 at the age of 83. Now there is obviously a wide contrast in views on what took place in this van. Some see what the doctor did as monstrous and pin him as a murderer, while others paint him as an activist who wanted to make sure those who wanted to pass did so painlessly and on their own terms. Either way, heightened emotions can come to those who see the van and fear may be one of them. And that might be one reason that Zach Baggins was like, I want this in my haunted museum. So let's go on to number seven. Another thing there, Bella Lugosi's mirror. Now this mirror has many stories attached to it, especially since its namesake comes from its connection to Bella Lugosi. And now if that isn't ringing any bells, he is most well known for playing Dracula in the 1931 film. So quite a ways back. Now guides of the tour at the museum say that Lugosi would use the mirror as a medium for scrying and trying to talk to his dead wife. But the truth is the only confirmed connection is that it was originally said to have once been in Bella Lugosi's house. Plus none of his five wives died while he was married to them and there is no documentation of him participating in the occult. But the mirror has seen some things. It was in the room when Frank Selatry was mysteriously murdered, a crime that still has not been solved. He was found bound up in the master bedroom with a single gunshot in the back of his head. So maybe those who let their minds wander while looking into this mirror fall ill when they project those ideas onto the mirror, or maybe the mirror itself has the capacity to haunt and curse those who look into it. Now people say they've seen entities reach out to them through the mirror or have the sensation of having their necks bitten while looking into it. but. Nothing has been confirmed. On to number six, John Morrell's preserved thumb. And now, I don't know exactly what Zach Baggins is saying about this thumb, but it's not John Morrell's. Now, he's probably basing his information off an incredulous book written by Virgil Stewart, and the backstory is, John Morrell in this book is said to be an occult leader and the head of the mystic clan that's purpose was to steal slaves to plan an overthrowing of authority. But this book was written by Virgil Stewart, who wrote it in an attempt to get more clout after capturing John Morrell, who was likely just a horse thief and a slave stealer. Now, Stewart just kind of blew the situation completely out of proportion to try to get more street cred. So while the thumb is real and a real thumb, it's not Murals, who probably died in prison and was buried with all of his thumbs on him. And now that's not to say what it stands for isn't scary. People in Mississippi read the book and believed in it, believed in what Stewart was saying. In Tennessee, they knew the truth because they knew Stewart and 
he was just fabricating things. But in Mississippi, Ooh, Nellie, they were suspicious of one another so much. The summer of 1835, people in Mississippi were killing one another and their innocent slaves on the off chance any of them was part of this mystic clan, which is a clan that didn't exist. So now you know the harm in falsifying stories, you can see how this little thumb is a creepy bugger and a symbolism of something bigger than it is. So worth it in a way to have at the museum. Now, another scary thing at number five, a cauldron previously owned by Ed Gein. Zach Baggins bought this cauldron at an auction and apparently it was found in a shed on the Old Gein property. And if you need a refresher on who Old Gein was, he was a grave robber and murderer that would experiment on human bodies, making masks of human skin to wear around the house and he used skulls as soup bowls. So no, I'm not kidding. This was his cauldron and, okay, what's the big deal, right? It's a cauldron. Well, it turns out, according to the person who auctioned off this item, Ed Gein stored body parts and blood in this cauldron in his shed. Now, obviously, as a collector of the horrendous and haunting, Baggins decided he needed it, and now it's on display. Now, one thing is for sure, that cauldron would make some killer soup. <laughs> At number four, Charles Manson's portraits. Another thing in this haunted museum is a portrait of Charles Manson. And now the portrait isn't just haunting due to it being of a mass murderer and cult leader. No, it's haunting because when you look into the eyes of this image, you are looking at Charles Manson. Well, in a way, you're looking at his ashes. The artist of the portrait, Ryan Almighty, used parts of Charles Manson's ashes for the eyes of this piece. And even wilder, Almighty achieved the reddish brown hues of the piece by using his own blood as the pigment. So this piece really is a little piece of the artist and his muse. Creepy. Now let's go to number three demon house staircase. So you may think a staircase doesn't have much inherent scary ideas attached to it, and you're not wrong, but this staircase was a part of a whirlwind scary experience. Latoya Amons and her three children allegedly underwent demonic possession in the house the stairs originated from. While living there while renting, Amons and her children experienced possession and terrifying experiences like walking up walls, floating over a bed, and feeling choked. So very haunting experiences. And all this escalated to the point that the Catholic Church backed up a priest who performed three exorcisms on Amons. And then the family relocated for their own safety with the help of Department of Child Services, and Zach Beggins then bought the house. He was interested with the reported demonic possessions and stories and explored the house until he demolished it, thinking, better done with it. He only kept a staircase and a little bit of carpet that's sealed off in a room in his museum that's voluntary for visitors to see, and even voluntary for staff to see because of the entities associated with it. Which is very nice for the staff members. It's like, it's so spooky. It's okay, you don't have to see it. I appreciate that. But now on to number two, a Chris Farley Polaroid. At Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum, he has this celebrity deaths room, which first of all, I think it's really weird for people to fixate on the death of someone they don't know, and I think this item I'm gonna talk about is disrespectful. In the celebrity death room, there is a Polaroid of Chris Farley after his overdose that killed him. It was acquired from a police officer that was at the scene. Since I cannot and will not show that photo, just know that it was a photo of his dead body after a drug overdose that visitors have described as sickening, disgusting, shocking, and horrifying. Now, using the image of a dead person, a real person as a gimmick is in poor taste and shows a lack of empathy on Beggin's behalf and that scares me. So that's included on this list. On to number one, Peggy the doll in Peggy's room. Now this one has a past. Let's talk about this doll before it got to the museum. Peggy was sent to a British paranormal investigator named Jane Harris after Peggy's previous owner was having some nightmares where the doll would haunt her dreams. That owner would wake up hot and shaken with fevers and hallucinations and even her local priest couldn't help her out. She eventually figured it was because of Peggy the doll and sent her off to Harris. Once Jane Harris and her team had the doll, they tried to figure out what was up, and they say that Peggy is possessed by the spirit of a woman from London, born in 1946 and died of some sort of chest condition, which is very specific. Wow. Yes, that's the history, but how does Peggy haunt? Well, apparently through dreams, pushing people away from entering her room in the haunted museum, or even light bulbs going out when people mention Peggy's name. Now, people are warned not to look her in the eye because they could feel chest pains, nausea to the point of vomiting, or really bad headaches. And now this could be the spirit within the doll circumventing some of her own pain, or many coincidences lined up together. But either way, many say the scariest thing they saw on their trip to Zach Bagan's haunted museum was 
Peggy. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China, and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible, and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't really been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead things have been going terribly for the farmers. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for this discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. At number 9 we have The Devil's Rocking Chair. Baggins acquired a rocking chair that was owned by the family whose stories are probably what inspired The Conjuring 3. Now, this was the devil made me do it case in the early 80s. During stories talking about David Glatzel's possession, Ed and Lorraine Warren said the rocking chair would rock on its own, levitate, and even vanish and reappear. Now, David and Lorraine also claimed to have seen the devil sitting in it. So, Take that as you will. Now, with all this spooky stuff in mind, Zach Baggins was just sold. He was like, I need this chair. This is, of course, though, a thing that happened on the opening night of the Devil Chair exhibit where he was like, look at this cool chair. Five people bawled uncontrollably and one woman collapsed. So according to TMZ, just a few hours after Baggins opened the exhibit, he shut down the exhibit. But then, a couple weeks later, opened it back up, less issues. But that opening night started with a bang. In our number eight spot today, we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31 years old. And there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler, but before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed the ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to just go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck really began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career really began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill, and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now be being placed in a bank vault all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number 7 spot today we have the Bassano Vase. The Bassano Vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came another mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of a secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead they sold it once again. Again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was a 37 year old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with the vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. Right now, we don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm just hoping it's somewhere deep underground or in space or something else far, far away from us all. In our number six spot today, we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey. It's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story behind it is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired the mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask, trapping it. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. 
This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes three times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? In our number five spot today, we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son. Part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Ramus. When Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of at least 16 people. In our number four spot today, we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All of the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay, what kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be honest. In our number three spot today, we have The Beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tallman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second hand set of bunk beds for their children for $100, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on and off by themselves. They would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in a landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number two spot today, we have the Belcourt Castle chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number one spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers 
rumors, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique just this one time. In our number 10 spot, we have items from Pompeii. Apparently, over the years, it has become a sort of thing where people that have stolen from the ruins of Pompeii in Italy, they always end up returning what they stole. Apparently, the site gets hundreds of packages of returned pieces and items with letters saying that this person has received terrible misfortune since taking this item, or this person has received terrible financial lows. So of course now the managers of the site warn the people to not take anything as they will be cursed for many years to come. It is unclear if the people that took the items continue to be cursed even after they return them, but honestly I suppose it depends on how long they plan to punish themselves mentally for doing something so ridiculous in the first place. In our number 9 spot today we have the water jug. Okay, state sales, they're weird places, there are weird things, there's some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I cannot make this item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away when he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was the jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same, it would increase seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this very mysterious and very strange object. In our number 8 spot we have the unlucky mummy. There is a mummy's case in the British Museum that is known to be cursed. Not the mummy, but the case. The case and mummy are from 950 to 900 BC and it became known as the unlucky mummy due to the many stories surrounding it that has been believed to have caused a lot of misfortune. Apparently the four men that found the mummy at Thebes in the late 1800s all quickly passed away. Two through violent incidences and two died of of poverty. People that have been associated with the mummy or have just touched the case have reported receiving illnesses, getting into accidents, and some have even passed away. There was once a wild rumor that it caused the sinking of the Titanic. One of the passengers was one of the first journalists to write about the curse and the case, and so it was believed that he was cursed and that led to the sinking. People even believed that the mummy's presence was on board of the ship. <laughs> Fascinating. In our number seven spot, we have the Haunted Ledger. There is a place called Preston Manor, and it was once owned by a family called the Kent family who claimed that a book caused them to be plagued by ghosts. The ledger dates back to World War I, and apparently it was found in a shop wall in Brighton, and the worker that found it took it home. Not long after, he and his daughter began to have visions of soldiers that had passed away, as well as many other visions. His daughter was told that the book must be returned to Brighton by one of the spirits, and so, of course, out of fear, they gave it to Preston Manor. Many who have touched it have felt that it is haunted and it's advised not to touch it. In our number 6 spot, we have the Dark Magic Doll. This is a doll that people have made throughout history that is usually made to represent someone you want to inflict pain on, similar to a voodoo doll, and in this case you make the doll look like the person you're thinking of and then you hang it. And this is supposed to make the person you're thinking of get sick and then pass away. So yeah, this type of doll not only can possess you but also it could potentially take your life. Great. People throughout history have apparently made these dolls and there are quite a lot of people that believe in them. So who who knows if they work or not, but still something to be cautious of. In our number 5 spot we have the Great Bed of Ware. Apparently there is a bed that is cursed. Makes sense. Honestly, if there is any object that 
you know, I would believe to be cursed. I would probably jump on board with the fact that it's probably a bed. Beds hold so much energy and if you're a little promiscuous then perhaps a few people have sat on your bed in your lifetime, damn that's a lot of energy that might need clearing. So anyways there is a bed called the Great Bed of Ware from the 15th century and it was formerly owned by King Edward IV. It was made by a carpenter called Jonas Fosbrook. It is said that after some time had passed the bed was actually donated to the poor and the poor mistreated the bed and covered it in graffiti. They say that Jonas Fosbrook's ghost was very mad about this and so he now attacks any commoner who sleeps in the bed that isn't of course of noble blood. In our number 4 spot we have the Ouija board. This is a board throughout history that people know that they shouldn't mess around with, but people still do. There have been many reportings of possessions, dark messages and dark energy when playing this game and for that reason alone people should stay away. Is it cursed? Arguably, yes, but it's more of a gamble. People never know who they are talking to and therefore they could be talking to a dark ghost and it could latch on to you they say. Definitely not a good idea to play around with an object with that kind of energy. Whether you believe in it or not, best to be weary of what you don't know. In our number 3 spot we have the devil's rocking chair. One night in 1980 a boy named David Gletzel woke up from his bed and claims that he had been visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face, pointed teeth and ears and he had horns. David reported many nightmares about a man that promised to take his soul and he then began to claim that he was seeing the beast when he was awake. He would always see it rocking in a rocking chair in his house and other family members would see this rocking chair rock back and forth seemingly under its own power. After David got many exorcisms and improved, his sister's boyfriend who was also staying in the house started acting like David was, hissing a lot and speaking in different voices. This drove him to killing someone. After this the rocking chair was donated to a museum. The museum then started to have some weird things happen to it. Doors started shutting on their own light switches would turn off, etc. In our number 2 spot we have the goddess of death statue. This statue is kinda strange looking and honestly at first glance you might think is this not just any other historical artifact? How is this cursed? Well the artifact was apparently made around 3500 BC and then was found in 1878 and so it's had many lives and there is a lot of energy associated with it. Apparently of the families it's belonged to over the many years since 1878 each one has been torn apart and ended in death. Weirdly enough within only 6 years all 7 members of the first family had all passed away. The same happened for its second owner after 4 years the whole family had died. After a third family owned it and two people passed away, they had the wisdom to donate the item to a museum. Smart. No one else needs to die because of a silly artifact. In our number 1 spot we have the Annabelle doll. In the early 1970s a college girl owned this doll as it was given to her as a gift. Her and her college roommate noticed that the doll would continuously move in their dorm. The doll at some point was believed to have killed a college student on another floor having been found bloody with a note that said help. And so after a failed exorcism by Ed and Lorraine Warren, the doll was put into a protection glass box and given to a museum in Connecticut. Yeah, best to never ever go near this doll.